Hey, super sexy gaming people. Right. This Dungeons and Dragons Adventure issue six. We get another tin with Dyson. Oh, and we get, we have leveled up our characters to level two. So that's nice. Our four character sheets have now leveled up. Right. Let's have a look. Introduction to Orcs. Ooh. Right, Magic Artions. Um, Uh, the magical world of Dungeons and Dragons is filled with wondrous items. There are many reasons to go adventuring, excitement, experience, knowledge, and to help those in need. There's also treasure for those who prefer a reward they can hold in their hands. This might take the form of monetary items, everything from gold coins and jewels to the deeds for a mansion, or it can often be in the form of magical items. Magic items fall into a number of categories, potions, uh, rings, rods, scrolls, staffs, wands, weapons, and wondrous items. Wondrous items is a catch-all category for everything from articles of clothing and jewelry to bags, carpets, crystal balls, figurines, musical instruments, and more. Some items are consumable, and are used up when they are activated. A potion or an elixir is swallowed and oil is applied. The writing vanishes from a scroll when it is read. Once used, a consumable item loses its magic. Some items must be worn and common sense dictates that a character can't wear two of those items at once. A character can't walk silently using boots of elven kind if they're already hiding their trail using boots of false tracks, for example. Excellent. Rarity. Not all magic items are created equal. Some are everyday items, referred to as common. The more powerful the item, the rarer it is. Powerful figures in the Forgotten Realms are likely to have a a few equally powerful items in their possession. The most powerful might be carrying incredibly rare legendary items or even one of a kind artifacts. Is it magical? Handling a magic item is enough to give a character a sense that there's something extraordinary about it, but it won't tell you what it does. The identify spell, which our pre-generated wizard, Merovich can cast, is the fastest way to reveal an item's properties. Alternatively, a character can focus on, focus on one magic item during a short rest, minimum one hour, while being in physical contact with it. At the end of the rest, the character learns the item's properties as well as how to use them. Potions are an exception. A little taste is enough to tell what the potion does. Okay, leveling up. Your character's skills and abilities advance as they progress through the fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons. Excuse me. Right, gaining hit points. So you gain hit points as you level up. Um, and you can either roll your hit die and then add your modifier. Uh, no, roll the hit die and then add your level, I think it is. Or at least it is for my character. So I can either roll a hit die or the hit dice, uh, yeah, one hit dice, one d10, sorry, yeah, one d10 plus my fighter level. So I have a chance of getting 10 plus, like, I can add in two or three or, you know, whatever. But equally, if I roll a die, I might just as, you know, happily get one. Well, not happily, but you know what I mean. Um, so it also gives you the option to have a standard advancement. So for example, my option is, or I just um, add in six plus my fighter level. So my character goes up um, that way. And, and yeah, you can, you can risk it 
and try and get a higher number. Um, or you can just accept the standard. Orcs, fists and warriors, or softly spoken librarians. When you play an orc, character the choice is yours. A bloody pantheon. Second level rogue features. Skill, speed and precision rogues are best known for their cunning using stealth and deception to their advantage whenever they can. As they progress to second level, a new class feature allows them to move and act with even greater speed. Hit point increase. Right, wizard features at second level. So we're going through, I think we're going through, yeah, cleric levels. We're going through all the characters that we've got second level and then fighter features at second level. So at second level, I took um, action surge. Um, and it's starting at second level, a fighter can push themselves beyond their normal limits for a moment. On their turn, they can use action surge feature to take one additional action. Once they use this feature, they must finish a short or long rest before they can use it again. A number of ways a fighter can make the best of this additional action. So attack, dash, disengage, dodge, shove, use an object. The kingdom of many arrows, law. The orcs call the sword mountains their own, looming above their elven, human and dwarven neighbors. King Obold, Obold, many arrows, right, and then the encounter, one to two hours, this encounter is balanced for second level players, encounter overview, Harbin Wester, the town master of Fandalin, brings a feast for his brother, Mordred, an adventurer of little note, he recently returned from the mountains carrying a sack of treasure recovered from a ruined keep. During the feast, a terrified farmer reports that orcs have surrounded the town. Townmaster Harbin hires adventurers to mount a defence for Fandalin. But the situation proves more complex than it first seemed. Mordred Wester is guilty of a terrible crime against the orcs. A crime that the orc leader now wants repaid in blood. To appease the orcs, the adventurers must be risk betraying the locals can they forge a peace between the two opposing groups or is bloodshed inevitable so this is going to be interesting the adventure begins in the streets of Fandalin. townmaster harbin wester emerges from his hall to announce a grand feast celebrating the return of a long absent brother the adventurer mordred wester everyone in town is invited to the stone hill inn with the meal paid for by the Wester family. Okay. Townmaster Harbin summons the adventurers and makes them an offer of 25 gold pieces each if they drive away the orcs. For every orc that they slay, he promises a group, he promises a group of bonus. He promises the group a bonus of 10 gold pieces. Meeting the Orc leader. Everyone in Fandalin knows the whereabouts of the old standing stone. If the adventurers try to parley with the Orcs, they are escorted to the Queen of Scars, a towering Orc covered in battle scars. The Queen of Scars has 30 hit points. She explains the following. Two nights ago, the Queen's son, Urzel, was due to marry an Orc from a neighbouring clan. The two met alone in a mountaintop cave to make their vows before Luthic cave Sorry, before Luthic, the cave mother, an orc god, Urzel carried a sack of treasures as an offering to Luthic. During the ceremony, Urzel and his bride-to-be were attacked by a sneaky human who fired at them from afar using a crossbow. Urzel was shot dead and his offering stolen, with only his bride escaping alive to recount the story. The queen mourns her son's death and demands vengeance. Her tribe have tracked his assassin to Fandalin. Unless he's handed over tonight, she promises to burn down the, the town. So this is getting interesting. 
say, how, how's your diplomacy? This is an open-ended scenario with no correct resolution. The players can advise their own solution to the problem. Kill the Queen of Scars. Assassinating the Queen of Scars is, Scars is no easy task, but could work with the right plan. Surrender Mordred. Uh, Mordred won't willingly surrender to the Orcs, but handing him over before dawn breaks the siege. Tough negotiations. Townmaster Harbin Wester can be persuaded to return the treasures to the Orcs but they'll still want more. The orcs only move on if the adventurers negotiate a deal. Perhaps a gift of cattle or a jewel of honour between Mordred and Queen of Scars. Yeah, that works. Let's have a gladiator moment. Are you not entertained? Um, so we've got our stat blocks for orcs and stat blocks for a human thug. So I think that would be a really interesting encounter to see, because this this will really, I think this will really give you an insight into how your fellow adventurers think, you know, um, um, and I think it will give you some really interesting, you know, I think everybody might offer some really interesting solutions to how that gets resolved. But yeah, that, as I say, looks like it could be a really interesting encounter because you're not, hopefully you're not going to use your ignorance and brute force to try and bludgeon your way out of that particular encounter. So we then get our four um, cards again. So these are cool. Um, obviously pre-made characters they've gone up to second level it looks like they've added in some extra bits and pieces for the spells with the wizards possibly um, uh, yeah so so our rogues hit points have gone up to 17 uh, our hill dwarf has gone up to our hill dwarf cleric has gone up to 19 our wood elf fighter has gone up to 22 and what has so they've added in the action surge into features and traits and nothing on the back yet um, but also um, armor class, uh, sorry, the hit points for the wizard light for halfling have gone up to 14. So, okay. They're a bit squishy, <laughs> the um, halflings. Right, let's have a look at our dice. Come down, have a look. <laughs> It's handy. I, I find these Ziploc bags really handy. So I'm glad I'm getting a few in this. Right. A bit of Perspex over the top, or plastic. This I will keep, this plastic. Um, so, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Come on. Yes. It's a bit stiff. Um, that, that's, that's, the, the um, scenery maker in me is like, that is perfect for window material for buildings. So that's going to go into my box of scrappy bits. Um, so whenever I get blister packs and stuff like that, um, if it's got a flat front, I'll cut the front out. Um, and keep it because this Perspex makes really great windows for, or this plastic makes really great windows. You just cut out what you need um, for terrain. So if you're building something, um, then you just cut it to size and glue it in. Anyway, I digress. So another tin. Um, so that's two now. Um, so we got our black 
set of black dice with issue two, I think it was. No, issue one. Issue one. And because we've got gold dice with issue or yellow dice with issue two. Let's have a look at these. Clear orange dice. Um, I'm not keeping my stuff in the tin. Uh, so it looks like I'm going to have a small collection, a small stack of adventure of tins. Um, but yeah, they're, they're nice. Again, I'm loving this gold. There seems to be some, I don't know whether that's just air bubbles or whether it is actually kind of like a metallic, uh, a thin metallic glitter in there. I don't know. don't know if you can see. So there's the dice. I don't know if you can see the glitter. If you look at D6 there, there's just a little bit of sparkle within it. So, and uh, obviously a lot of the other dice in there have got the same. Roll. Mm. It's currently rolling more lows than highs. Oh, actually, starting to equal. Okay. So anyway, there you go. Those are your dice. Kind of orangey coloured, orangey glitter. So. And there you have issue six and the dice. Uh, we are getting more dice as we go on. Um, hopefully we'll get some more maps as well. We might get some more standee figures. Um, I think in my next delivery I'll get a binder to start popping this stuff in. So that'll be nice. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.